Welcome to episode six of Microbrews, my new video series on how to make the best use of a microscope in your home or craft brewery. In this episode, I'll be demonstrating the most basic method of looking at yeast under a microscope, the classic wet mount. I'll also be demonstrating how to perform a very important procedure called a serial dilution, which is critical not just for wet mounts, but also for staining yeast for viability and vitality, performing yeast counts and other exercises. That said, a wet mount is the easiest way to look at a yeast sample, and it's also the basis of many useful assays of yeast health and viability. For this video, I'm going to assume you know how to use your microscope, including alignment of your light source and using your oil lens. If you're unfamiliar with these processes, please watch the first five episodes of Microbrews. You don't need many supplies for a wet mount. You need a slide, a cover slip, a hair, and an eyedropper or some other way of putting yeast onto your slide. It's not required, but it's very useful, especially if you want to do a serial dilution, to have either a dropper plate like I have here, or a simple ceramic saucer will do, as well as some distilled water to use as a dilutant. If needed, you can also use a Bunsen burner or alcohol lamp, as well as proper aseptic techniques to help maintain your yeast culture in an uncontaminated state. For more on this, please see my videos in the Home Yeast Lab Made Easy series. Preparing a wet mount is quite simple. Simply take a glass slide, as well as a small amount of yeast in a dropper, and place a very small droplet of yeast onto your slide. Next, place a hair next to your droplet, and then add your cover slip. Now when adding your cover slip, you want to put it down on the hair first, with the hair about two thirds to one, three quarters of the way towards one end, and you then lower it down onto the droplet. What this will do is create a triangular cross section that is thickest at the hair and thinnest on the edge, so you should be able to move back and forth on the sample in order to find a region with a reasonable density of yeast for viewing. Once your wet mount is prepared, place it on your microscope using your lowest magnification lens and try and center the hair over the illumination source. It's much easier to focus on the hair than it is on a thin layer of yeast. Then, using your lowest magnification, focus on the hair. Your yeast sample should now be in focus. Next, move your sample so that you're imaging closer to the edge where the yeast sample is a little bit thinner. As you move the slide towards the edge, you should see the density of yeast drop. Stop where you reach a density where you can clearly see each individual yeast with a reasonable spacing between them. You can now increase your magnification to your, your medium magnification lens, or even to your oil immersion lens in order to view the yeast in the way that you need to view. Now, if you are using your oil lens, it's no different than using your uh, oil lens under other circumstances. Simply put the drop of oil right on top of that cover slip, swing that high magnification lens into place, and you're now ready to image. But what do you do if there's far too many yeast or other organisms in your sample to get a good view of what's going on? Well, luckily it's very easy to address this using something called a serial dilution. What you want to do is on a spot plate like I have here, or on a ceramic dish, place nine drops of water into one spot, doing your best to use the same size drop every single time. We're then going to take our yeast and place a single droplet of yeast into the first well that I prepared. Using either a clean pipette or a pipette that we've rinsed thoroughly, we can then mix that solution together and we've now diluted our yeast one in 10. So it will be one tenth as dense as we had previously. But what if that's still not enough? Well, now we can take one drop of that one in 10 dilution and add it to our next well. Again, rinse our pipette, and we can then mix that well. And we now have a one in 100 dilution of our original yeast's solution. And if we need to go even further, we can of course take one droplet of our one in 100 and add it to our next well containing nine drops of liquid. And this is now a one in a thousand dilution. And we can keep doing this until we get our yeast numbers down to a point 
where they work uh, in a wet mount. Now in most wet mounts, you are unlikely to need to dilute more than one in 10, but when we get into yeast counting in a video or two, you're gonna find that you may need to dilute one in 100 or even one in 1,000, especially if you're looking at something like a highly active starter or a uh, yeast slurry solution. Once you're done imaging your sample, remove it from the stage. And if you haven't used your oil immersion lens, you can actually clean the cover slip with a bit of glass cleaner as well as your slide and reuse it. In this case, I've used the 100 hex lens. So I need to very carefully remove my slide. While the slide is reusable, unfortunately that oil on the cover slip means it must be thrown out. Luckily they're quite cheap, so this isn't a big loss. So that is how to prepare a wet mount and perform a serial dilution. Please join me in episode seven to learn how to use wet mounts to assess yeast viability and vitality.